Hi YouTubers and gamers and I'm back with another pickup video and um, I've got quite a lot to show you today um, starting off with um, non gaming bits I've um, got an amiibo uh, this is from Mother 1 I believe which is a game that came out before Earthbound which was obviously Mother 2 I believe and this is Lucas I'll probably keep this one box though because it's quite a bit of an unusual character uh, and then moving on to uh, still same with, with the Nintendo on a 3DS. I've got Luigi's Mansions 2. I got this for £20 from Cash Converters, which is a bloody good price. Um, this game definitely keeps its value. You never see it that cheap. Actually, it's getting less common now, I think, because most people are going to hold on to them. Um, moving on to a DS now. I've got Lego Ninjago, the video game. I quite like the any of the Lego games, so I tend to pick them up. This was about six pounds, and that's a, that was CX. But this next game is is kind of a a um, a, pla a platformer with a difference. You generate bubbles that help you transport yourself, and it's called Soul Bubbles. It's quite a different game. It was only about three pound fifty, but it looked interesting. It is. I think this could be one of those sort of hidden gems that might end up worth a, a bomb at some point because it's quite a, it's quite a, a well made game that okay move on to a PSP Sonic Rivals 2 I think this was about I think that's about three or four pounds from CX again um, Crush again it's kind of a puzzle game I think this is uh, this that was um, about, about one pound fifty from CX and this was about four or five pound. Pac-Man World Three from CX as well. On the Xbox One, got one game, uh, Halo Five Limited Edition. This one does come with a disc, I do believe, as well as all the extras. Um, I've got the big Halo um, set with the console, but I wanted to get this. The Steelbook Edition, um, when it's reasonable value and it's down to 30 quid and game, which is good because I think it was about 70 pounds when it first came out. So that's a you know that's a good deal to have all new and sealed. Okay, um, the PS4 got a few titles here. Um, where's the Evil Origins um, collection? This is like um, uh, HD remasters of uh, Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil the first one. And um, I do actually have these as well on Japanese stroke English uh, PS3 copies as well. I do. I think they would set the disc really well on that, on that, on that one. Um, okay, on the PS4, I think that was about £21. Or no, yeah, £21 or £22, something like that. Uh, this one was um, Broken Sword with Serpent's Curse. I think this was about under £15 from game. And this was about £14 or something like that from game. Zombie, which is um, a PS4 port of, of Zombie U. I'm really glad that this came over to PS4 because it's supposed to be a very good game. And to have it on the PS4 is even better. It's my console choice between the two. Okay, um, got a few PS3 titles here. Another Wonder Book game, Walking with Dinosaurs. This, this was. Um, about four pounds, I think, from CX. Looks a bit different. This was about eight pound from. I think it was like a cash converter or something like that. Uh, family Guy, um, Back to a Universe. Big Family Guy fan. Even though the games aren't fantastic, but I think that one was better than the first game that came out quite a few years ago. Okay, um, this was about one pound fifty. Um, Formula One 2010, that was from C, uh, Cash Converters. They also had 2014, but that was like 14 quid, so <laughs> no, I think I'll wait until they come down to this sort of money, £1.50. You can't argue with that, can you? Alright, uh, this game was, I think it was about four, between four and six pounds from the CX. That's um, Cabela's Survival, so it's obviously a hunting type, shooting type game. Use the move features if you want to, but you know, probably won't. 
Okay, Dragon Ball game. Dragon Ball Raging Blast. This was about £9 from cash converters. Okay, this game was about £6 from CX. It's supposed to be very good actually. It's a very good kart race, even though it's based on a Formula 1, um, you know, IP I suppose. And that's a F1 Race Stars. It's supposed to be very good, like I said. So if you, you like your kart races, do give this one a try. Okay, uh, on the PS3 there's quite a few HD remastered um, collections. I've got, I think I've got, I must have all of them, all of them now. But uh, this is one which I hadn't had for a while. This was about, I think it was about £11 from CX. And that is Worms a Collection. So on that you get the original Worms, Worms Ultimate Mayhem and Worms 2 Armageddon. It's tons of Worms games so it's a bit of ambitious to have a, a collection of Worms games but there is one. Okay, this next game is a bundle of three games put together. I did get this on the Xbox 360 when it first came out because um, I had all the standalone games on the Xbox 360 so I was just being consistent. But I kind of regretted not getting it also on PS3 because on PS3 the price shot up um, and it was very hard to find. Um, in most shops you're still looking at about £30 plus but I might have to get this from 18 quid from the um, um, cash converters and that is Mass Effect Trilogy. So it's all three games. This is the only way of getting the first game on the PS1 I believe because um, it did come out on the PS1 originally. It came out on the PS1 on the PS3 originally the first game. It, you know, it was Mass Effect 2 was the first one to come out on the PS3. Although I think they had like an additional episode which explained what happened storyline wise in the first game. So to get it on the PS3, you know, I'm stoked. Right, moving to Wii. Um, I think there was two games of Spyro the Dragon on the Wii. Um, I think this is the Eternal Dragon, is it? And this one, the Eternal Knight. And I got this for five pound from Cash Converts, which again is a quite a good price for that. Okay, this game is an interesting uh, golf type game. Uh, it can be cute to see Japanese characters. Um, it's called Pangea Golf with Style. So only about two or three pound, I think, from CX this was. So I thought, hmm, looks different. Pick that up. Okay, this game was twelve pound from CX, which sounds quite a lot for a Wii game, but you, got, you, can, you can command more money in Amazon, and I think there's the Xbox 360 version of it as well. But I don't mind having a Wii one. Um, Let's go with my Power Rangers collection. It's Saban's Power Rangers Samurai, but this game is one of those less common, more expensive Wii games. Okay, this game, I think it's more like a 3DS port as opposed to original PS3 port. Uh, it's based on the Green Lantern movie, it came out at the same time as that, but actually I don't think it's actually based on the movie, I think it's just coincidentally came out at the same time as the movie. Uh, Green Lantern, Rise of the Manhunters. Um, this is more of a cartoony style as opposed to like the movie version of the game. So this is probably a better one to have out of the two. Um, okay, I, this wasn't a lot of money. I think I got it from CX for about three or four pounds. It wasn't a lot. Okay. Um, okay, this is another Hudson game which I thought I'd pick up on the Wii. Um, it's called Job Island Hardworking People. I think it's got some comic elements really. I think you... Yeah, it's got... Basically what you got to do is help our goofy families save the world from a giant meteor by playing 50 mini-games. So it's a... Um, yeah, it's a... It's a very goofy type game. But these... Um, I think it's, a, it's, t it's about three sports island games. And this is one called Job Island. So it's part of that sort of IP type thing. So... Pleased to have that on a Wii. Again, it wasn't a lot of money. I think it was about four or five pounds from CX. Okay, moving on to a 360. I've got quite a few here. Uh, first of all, starting off with a mediocre. Uh, I only got this because it's a 360 exclusive. I played a demo when it first came out and it was pretty poor. 
it's a bit of a sci-fi game with sort of like almost like Gaelic or pagan type inferences really um, sort of like Norse mythology as well I don't know it's um uh, I weren't that impressed with really. it. The graphics were mediocre and apparently it took years to come out, it was delayed, it cost the studio havoc, a lot of money, and I think they went down because of it. And that is too human. Uh, all, all pretty neat, that is one minty for £1.50. It's just for a 360 collection, I don't think it'll be one up, bother playing. Okay, this game is a much better game. It's Transformers War for Cybertron, one of the better Transformers games. I've got this on the PS3, but I wanted to have it on the all of the consoles we used to have it on the 362. That still commands a lot of money. I've got that for about £12 from CEX. This one was about £8 from CEX. It's, um, it's one of the Need for Speed games which I had to have on the 360. Uh, it's, it has a DLC sheet but I haven't seen tested to see if it's been used or not. It probably has. But again, you know, you can't go wrong with the Need for Speed racing games, I think. Okay. Final Fantasy XI. Um, that's an online game, as you may be aware, and on a 360, it came out in various combinations. And I, I have here five copies or five versions of it, believe it or not. And I thought I'll pick them up while you still can, even though they're a bit pointless because they're all like online mode play anyway. So. They're more just for a shelf more than anything else really, but being a Final Fantasy fan, I thought it's worth having in the collection. So you got the Final Fantasy original with the uh, expansion packs, um, Rise of Zealot, Chains of Promothea, and Treasures of Asht Ergun, or whatever. So there's that one. I think that came out in 2006, I believe. And a year later, there's a 2007 edition which contains the same expansions and a few updates, but pretty much the same really, the 2007 edition then there was in 2008, uh, the 2008 edition which has another expansion pack compared to those three which was Rings of the Goddess Okay. Then there was just two expansion packs. There's Rings of the Goddess, which you can buy separately if you did buy a 2008 edition, which I've got here. Or, uh, the number one, which wasn't on any of those, I believe, is Final Fantasy XI Seekers of Adarin. Now, I paid for these anything between 350 and I think they're mostly 350 to six pound, but that I think that last one was more to closer to ten. Because I think it's less um, less common than the others. Okay, uh, moving on to the PS2. Uh, I got this from CX. It was only about three or four pound. I thought it was worth more than that because it's not a game I see that often really. And that is the Amazing Allies edition of Spider-Man: The Web of Shadows. I tend to pick up all the Marvel games when I see them. Right, this game has, has a lot of talk about it. It's supposed to be quite good. I think there's also a 3DS copy of this as well. A modern update on it. And it's a Sea World Adventure, um, Shamu's Deep Sea Adventure. Obviously, you control a whale and you've got to. Uh, I guess it's like a, achieve a few certain missions and so forth. So it must be a, an okay game, a bit different. Um, again, I think that's only about three or four pounds from C um, CEX. Alright, these next two games, I can't remember what I paid for these exactly. I know one was about eighteen pound, which is quite expensive, but it's still cheaper than Amazon. And the other was about, um, I think it's about ten pounds. And I can't remember which way, which one was which now, without doing my research. But what one is Dragon Ball Z uh, Budokai Three. Okay, and the other one was Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. Basically, if it's got three in a number, it's a lot more money. 
Okay, uh, this next game I just got for novelty value. I expect it to be bad, and it is pretty bad. It's by the infamous European publisher, or a stroke developer, called Phoenix, Phoenix Games. And what they did is they got lots of cheap games, which they were basically poor PC games, which they ported onto a PS2, just to cash in when the PS2 was out. Um, this particular game, I can't say I've seen it that often. It's not worth a lot. Um, I paid pound fifty, and it's called Extreme Quads. And obviously you go around on the um, quad bikes, but you know, as soon as you tap into something, it, you know, it stops you. So it's a really mediocre game, that really is. Um, but it's Phoenix, it was pound fifty, so I thought, you know, sometimes the worst games, like the Phoenix games, some of them tend to be rather collectible at some point, so I just thought I might as well get it for pound fifty. I won't be getting all the other Phoenix games unless it's one of the few, it's a few ones that are extremely rare. Uh, on a previous video I showed you my rarest ever game ever, which was a Phoenix game, but there are a few others that are worth a fair bit of money too, so it's worth knowing your research on those ones. Okay, this one, uh, go with my Ford Racing games, Ford Racing 2, again I think that's about £1.50 from CX. This is about 2 or 3 quid from CX, Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup. I'm not a fan of Harry Potter, but I just got this because it's more of a, a racing type um, game. So I thought that might be a bit more fun than some of the others. Okay, this one, I've got to get the games on a standalone. But I haven't got this um, co uh, compilation pack, and it was £12 from CX, and I thought, hmm, uh, Crash. Crash Bandicoot games are rising in value, so I thought I might get it while I can still see it to go in the collection, and that is a the Crash Ach Crash Bandicoot Action Pack, which has Crash Nitro Car, Crash Twin Sanity, and Crash Tag Team, which interestingly aren't by Naughty Dog, but they were by Sierra. And some people argue, you know, the Crash Bandicoot later games weren't so good. Well, that's surprising considering they're developed by Sierra. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's different really. Because Sierra also did quite a, a later Spyro Dragon games too. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. You would have thought that would be a perfect combination of a good studio st developer and, and, um, and, and a good IP. What went wrong? Perhaps, people, perhaps the market was tired of Crash Bandicoot and the market was tired of Spyro Dragon, that's why they declined. But at least Skylanders saved Spyro. Perhaps they can bring Crash Bandicoot into a, the Skylanders world. That would be a good idea, maybe. I don't know. Okay, um, let's go retro, shall we? Alright. On the Mega Drive, or Genesis in this case, there are a series of... Sh um, of platform... Well, not, well, not sure platformer games, but more of a... A um, adventure type game whereby it is side scrolling, but you you play a Japanese schoolgirl who in who has like special powers. You can wield a magical sword called Valis. Sounds very dodgy, I know. Uh, I've got Valis one and Valis three on a, on the Genesis. Very rare games, but there is this uh, Valis two never actually came out on the Genesis, but they did a a remake of it in the sort of a cartoony style called Sid, I think it's Sid or Side, Sid of Valis on the Genesis. And this game is quite very, very uncommon and quite expensive as a result. I got I paid about 50, just about fifty pounds for this. Um, it's not the best out of the three games by 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 far, but you know if you if you've got the other two, you need to have the third, I think. Okay, this game. I got it for about £25 delivered, it's all complete in box. The box does have some um, some damage, it's got some um, sticker damage. But it's not a lot that I can do about that really. Um, but it's all complete. And £27 for this particular title isn't too bad. It's based within the Final Fantasy franchise. Um, in the, in, it was, the first game was called Mystic Quest on a Game Boy. In Europe it was called that. I think it was called... Final Fantasy Mystic Quest in the States and it was called Final Fantasy Mystic Quest Legend, the sequel in America, but it was just called 
Mystic Quest Legend over here in Europe. So this is like a, an RPG with sort of more simplistic elements really, and it's more linear. It's more designed for a younger market, so I'll probably love it. <laughs> um, yeah, so nice to have a SNES, uh, one of another, another SNES game off the list. There's only a few left, so I might be completing that gaming goal soon. I'm talking about completing gaming goals, I've got a few more NES titles. And again, after these, I'll send you a few more I need. First of all, Disney's Chippendale Rescue Rangers. This was about £16 delivered, all complete in box. Can't beat the old Disney Capcom games. Okay, there was Batman. Then there was a sequel. And then there came out Batman Returns. But what was that sequel that came out before Batman Returns? It was Batman Return of a Joker by Sunsoft. Um, challenging but very good game. Um, this game commands a lot of money still. Um, to get it complete in box with all the, you know, like I said, with all the original box and manual and everything, it's not easy and it wasn't cheap either. Um, I bought the box and the game on a loan and I got that for about £45. I thought I'll, go, I'll get a manual separately, and that's hard. I'd bite a bullet in the end and pay £25 for a manual, so it's still about 70 quid. Which sounds a lot, it is a lot of money with an NES game, but um, you know, to get this all complete, you're looking above £70 easily on eBay anyway, so um, so yeah, I've bit of a bit and got that in the end, so yeah, spent a lot of money on these games. But, you know, there's only a few more, and I'll complete, and to have, a, you know, to finish some of these um, collections, in my mind, not complete collections, just, you know, my personal goal collections of games that I really want, is, is would be great. Okay, um, also, I didn't have this, but I've been wanting this for many years, and I never got around to getting it, and I got this, it's part of a bundle. I got the first game, and the second game, shown in the background. And they're both in very good complete in box edition. They are the UK English PAL copies. Again, that's um, not necessarily easy to find these days because they're either American or. which I don't mind, I've got no problem with American NES games, but to, to have a European, the UK ones is even better because they tend to you know, command more money over here. But more, more importantly, to have. Um, uh, the second game, or complete in box with manual and everything, and that is an amazing, amazing feat, really. And um, at least both these seller was selling them both for hundred pounds, one hundred pounds, and that sounds like a hell of a lot of money for two NES games. Well, when you see, well, you probably guess what they are uh, from what's in the background, but uh, that's a, that's a good price for these two particular games. So, DuckTales two, I mean, I'm gonna be, you know, you can, I mean, DuckTales one, you can probably get that for about, you know. You know, around a twenty-pound mark. So you thinking about it? I paid about eighty pounds for this other game, which is a good price for Ducktales Two. Original carts. You know, we always cut games. I always take them apart, and make sure they're not, you know, repo carts or anything, and they're not. They've all got the Nintendo boards. Uh, but to get Ducktales Two complete in box, that's um, an amazing achievement in my mind, because it's such a an uncommon game and quite a very expensive game too. So yeah, I'm going to have to give that a go at some point. <laughs> so that's it guys, that's my um, pickups uh, for the last week or, or so. Um, quite a lot of games and some classics and gems. A few little trashy titles but that doesn't matter. I mean, you've got all those gems to have in the collection and play. Um, I do have some good news as well for some of you. Um, uh, I've actually managed to get some storage shelves, so I'm going to have a big sort out in my game room, hopefully later today, and that might mean that I might be able to do a game room video very, very soon. And then a lot of people have been talking about, you know, asking for one, and I think the second video I ever made over a year ago was a little sneak peek of my game room. Uh, well, it's changed a fair bit since then. Um, it's not only with lots more games, but uh, a lot more to it, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a bigger sort out in the game room, and hopefully it will be a bit more manageable, a bit more presentable, and I can actually show you a video. 
Um, yeah, that'd be interesting to see what people think of my game room actually, because it's one of those game rooms whereby I've got a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> And I do, I do need a game room about twice the size, but it's about making most of uh, limited space really. And and until I move, you know, this is what I've got to deal with really. But I've got some, um, I've got four sets of stored shelves, uh, quite good ones. Uh, so I'm hoping that those will help me organise the games a bit better. Even though there will be still issues about, you know, physically getting hold of certain games because they're a bit out of reach and it's just a problem getting to get to. But uh, you understand more when I do a game room tour at some point. Which hopefully be maybe next week or week after. So until then, guys, take care. If you haven't already, please subscribe, leave comments, and thanks again for all your support. It's very much appreciated. So take care and bye.